Hello fleet and welcome back to another episode of Know Your Ship with myself Chase. Today's episode will cover the Nagato class battleships. There are two battleships of this class, the Nagato and the Mutsu. These ships were laid down in 1917 but would not be completed until 1921. At the time when these two battleships were completed, they were the most powerful battleships in the world. Their combination of speed, armor protection, and large guns were second to none anywhere in the world. As originally built, the Nagato-class battleships were 215.8 meters long and had a beam of 29.02 meters. These ships displaced 32,720 metric tons standard and 39,116 metric tons fully loaded. The ships produced 80,000 shaft horsepower that was sent to four shafts, driving four propellers that was designed to push the ships to 26.5 knots. On trials, however, the Nagato reached 26.7 knots on 85,500 shaft horsepower, and the Mutsu reached the same speed on 87,500 shaft horsepower. Interestingly enough, the US Navy did not learn about the true speed of the Nagato-class battleships until 1937. It was previously believed by the US Navy that the Nagatos could only do 23 knots. The ships were capable of traveling 10,200 kilometers at a speed of 16 knots. The Nagatos in their original configuration had a unique seven-legged mast, instead of the later more iconic pagoda masts. They also had two funnels instead of the one that would appear later on. These two funnels, however, caused quite a few problems as the smoke from the forward tunnel would severely affect the people in the bridge and the fire control towers. A number of things were trying to attempt to fix this problem. They tried to add a directional cowl to the fore funnel, but that didn't help. They even ended up bending the fore funnel into the serpentine shape that you see in this picture here. But none of these were really satisfactory, and this problem wouldn't really go away until after the modernization. The Nagatos were designed based on the all-or-nothing principle of armor protection where the heaviest armor would be used to cover the essential areas of the ship only, while unessential areas were left with very little armor. The Nagatos were considered to be well-armored ships, with a belt armor up to 305mm thick and a deck armor of 144mm. The gun turrets had armor 305mm thick, and the barbettes had armor 305mm thick as well. The conning tower had 369mm of armor. These ships were also extremely well-armed, packing eight 410mm guns in four twin turrets, numbered 1 to 4 from front to back. These guns could elevate between minus 2 and plus 35 degrees. They fired roughly two rounds a minute and were capable of firing a Type 88 1000 kg armor-piercing shell to a range of 30,200 meters. In 1931, the Type 88 shells were replaced by the slightly heavier Type 91 shells that weighed 1,020 kg. The guns were also capable of firing a 936 kg high explosive shell and a special Type 3 Sun Shikidan anti aircraft shell, which were also known as the Beehive shells. The ships also carried 20 single 140mm guns in casements, which was capable of firing a 38 kg shell to between 15,800 meters and 17,000 meters. Anti aircraft protection, however, was extremely weak at the time with only four single 76mm anti-aircraft guns. The ships were equipped with eight 533mm torpedo tubes, and the original ships had a crew of 1,333. The two Nagato-class battleships were modernized between 1933 and 1936, and a large number of changes were made. The modernized version is what will appear as the Tier 7 Japanese battleship in World of Warships. And here she is. The two most obvious visual differences after modernization is one, the elimination of the forward funnel that was instead replaced by a single central funnel, as you can see here. The other was the replacement of the original seven-legged mast with this large pagoda-style mast that would eventually become common to all Japanese battleships. Not only that though, but the ship's overall length was increased as well. The ship increased to 224.94 meters long with a beam of 34.6 meters. The length increase was meant to help the ship improve its speed 
because of the added protection and equipment that increased the ship's displacement to 46,690 metric tons at deep load. Nevertheless, even with the increased length, the ship's speed decreased to 24.98 knots on 82,300 shaft horsepower. However, range increased to 15,850 kilometers at 16 knots due to the added fuel oil that was stored in the newly added torpedo bulges. During the modernization, the armor on the Nagato-class battleships would be increased. Additional armor was placed over the machinery and magazines to better protect them from damage. The installation of new turrets also made the turret armor significantly better. The face armor of these turrets was now 460mm, side armor was at 280mm, and the roof armor at 230 to 250 millimeters. These new turrets also provided an increase to the angle which the Nagatos could fire its guns, from 35 degrees to 43 degrees, thereby increasing range to 37,900 meters. During the modernization, the underwater torpedo tubes and the two forward 140 millimeter guns in the casements were removed. All the remaining 140 millimeter guns had their elevation increased to 35 degrees. This increased their range to 20,000 meters. The single 76 millimeter AA guns that were in the original ship were replaced by these dual 127 millimeter guns. The Nagatos in 1939 were also equipped with dual and triple 25 millimeter guns that you can see here. These guns, however, suffer from a major design shortcoming. They lack sufficient speed in train and elevation, and the gun sights were unable to deal with fast-flying targets. The magazines were also extremely small, only 15 rounds. This led to an effective fire rate of only between 110 and 120 rounds a minute. This made it extremely difficult to shoot down fast-flying aircraft. The Nagato-class battleships were also equipped with a catapult behind their funnel and before the third turret that you can see here. This allowed the Nagato-class battleships to actually launch scout planes. The Nagato and Mutsu service history was in a way rather quiet. When they were commissioned, the ships hosted then Prince of Wales Edward and his aide in 1922. In 1923, they delivered aid to the victims of the Great Kanto Earthquake. In 1924, they sank the obsolete battleship Satsuma in accordance with the Washington Naval Treaty. During the 1927 and 1933 naval maneuvers and fleet review, the Mutsu served as the flagship of Emperor Hirohito. After their reconstruction, they helped transport 3,749 men of the 11th Infantry Battalion to Shanghai during the Second Sino-Japanese War. By 1941, as Japan was preparing for war against the United States, the two Nagatos would undergo a refit that included additional armor for their barbettes. When Japan attacked Pearl Harbor on December the 7th of 1941, the Nagato and Mutsu sortied with four battleships of Battleship Division 2 and the light carrier Hosho to act as distant cover for the Pearl Harbor group. They returned six days later having engaged in no action. In June of 1942, both ships were assigned to the main body of the First Fleet during the Battle of Midway but again saw no action against American ships. Nagato would then return to Japanese waters and stay in a training role until August of 1943. Mutsu, on the other hand, was transferred to the Second Fleet and supported operations during Guadalcanal. During the Battle of the Eastern Solomons on August the 27th of 1942, the Mutsu undertook her first and only combat action of the war when she fired four shells at an enemy recon aircraft. The Mutsu returned to Japanese waters on January the 7th of 1943 and stayed in a training role until June the 8th of 1943. On that particular day, the magazine of the Mutsu's number 3 turret exploded. The ship broke in two with great loss of life. 1,121 sailors and visitors were killed when the Mutsu exploded. The Nagato would not take part in any major operations until the Battle of Leyte Gulf. During the Battle of the Shibuyan Sea, the Nagato was attacked by multiple waves of American dive bombers and fighters, which killed 52 crew members, but the ship was not heavily damaged. The next morning, the Nagato engaged the escort carriers and destroyers of Taffy 3. She opened fire, but missed. In an attempt to avoid torpedoes, both the Nagato and the Yamato executed a turn that would take them 16 kilometers away from the engagement area. Turning back, the Nagato re-engaged American escort carriers and destroyers. 
In the engagement, she fired 45 410mm shells and 92 140mm shells. Her shooting was ineffective, as visibility was hampered by numerous rain squalls and smoke screens laid by the US destroyers. After the failure at Leyte Gulf, the Nagato returned to Japan for repairs. Sadly, by the 25th of November 1944, a severe lack of fuel and materials meant that the Nagato could not be brought back into service and was instead turned into a floating anti-aircraft battery. Her funnel and main mast were removed to improve the arcs of fire of her AA guns. You can see that quite clearly in this clip where the funnel has been completely cut away. By June of 1945, all of the Nagato's secondary guns and half of her AA guns were moved ashore. By the time the war ended and the Americans took over the ship, she was in terrible shape. You can see that in this particular video clip. After the war, the Nagato was selected to be a target ship in Operation Crossroads, the nuclear tests at Bikini Atoll. Nagato survived the first nuclear blast with only minor damage, but the second explosion sank her. She is currently lying upside down on the bottom of the atoll. She has become a popular dive spot, however, in recent years, and if you're interested, you can certainly Google up or YouTube up some underwater footage of the Nagato's wreck. And that's all folks, sorry for taking so long with this Know Your Ship episode. It took me a heck of a lot longer than I expected to piece everything together and record the things that I wanted to make this episode that much different from any that I've done before. I really do hope that you enjoyed this one. If you do, don't forget to subscribe as I'll be doing my best to continue making more of these. I wish you all an absolutely fantastic week and I'm looking forward to seeing you all on the high seas.